You guys, it is the middle of May and the garden is absolutely going crazy. So that means it is time for our May garden tour. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. My name is Veronica and today I'm gonna walk you through my entire garden, um, which is 60 feet total all right 30 feet long two feet wide 60 feet total and everything that we've been able to harvest so far this season um, everything that i am struggling with in the garden as far as pests um, and some maybe lighting issues for some of the plants let me jump right in and i will show you exactly what's going on all right so we're gonna start over here um this is the right corner of my garden where all of my or where half of my roma tomatoes are actually um you can see we actually have quite a few little baby Roma tomatoes starting to come out. Um, I actually went through and picked off a whole bunch of them that were not doing too well um, because if you'll notice here, we have some damage on these leaves, all right? So this is actually cutworm damage. Um, and so I came out here a couple days ago and I noticed on the bottom sides of a lot of these leaves, there were little baby cutworms. And I think maybe I got quite a few of them off. So I haven't seen any of them for the last day or so, um, but there were quite a few and I took them and I put them in soapy water um, and they seem to not have come back. And I also put, as you can see, um, I put a whole bunch of diatomaceous earth. Um, so that seems to have controlled it quite a bit. And I did get some BT, which I'm gonna be using on the garden. This is um, effective for cutworms and caterpillars and that sort of thing. Um, so I will be spraying this on the plants. Um, I'm gonna do this at night so it doesn't dehydrate any of the plants or burn them or whatever it is. Um, the same thing with neem oil. So I'm gonna spray this on the foliage and then just continue to do it because I did notice I didn't have tons of very large ones, but I got a whole bunch of little baby ones. So I'm gonna try to control it that way um, so that I don't have to throw out any of these beautiful tomatoes. Um, these are my aromas and I cannot wait to harvest them. Oh and we got one little guy here so i'm gonna go ahead and pick him off before he gets to my plants so before i go on to the rest of the garden you can see that i have my vertical gardening here i have some herbs planted behind or underneath my um, my tomatoes all of that so one of the things that I really love talking about on this channel is maximizing your garden space, right? So my last video was how to maximize your garden space, right? If you have a little bit of space, how to grow more food in just that small amount of space. Now, I also wanted to say that my starting your urban vegetable garden is now live as of May 14th today. So I am super excited to share that with you guys. It is everything I know about growing food in a small space in your backyard, um, anything like that. And it talks about tons of ways to maximize your growing space on your budget with your time um, in a space you already have to grow the most amount of food for your family um, that you possibly can so if you're interested in that I will leave the link in the description below be sure to check that out all right so growing next to that are my cucumbers um, and they are actually growing oh, if I can avoid the sun here they're growing up above the fence line I don't know if you can see it it's kind of blown out here um, but they're growing above the fence line so I'm gonna come and kind of just do some control on this and bring them down and keep them on this trellis um, i have some space this way um, above the beans here this little area um, so i'm gonna try to trellis them downward again and back up um, but the most exciting thing and i have been actually waiting to pick this um, so i can make this video my lemon cucumber my very first lemon cucumber actually so here we are beautiful lemon cucumber i cannot wait to cut this open um it has been ripening a couple days here and i wanted to show you guys so i waited um but i am really happy to be able to harvest it now and we have a ton more little yellow flowers um that was the first one but i did see a whole bunch of other ones growing here um so i think we actually might get a few lemon cucumbers this season um i can't wait to actually try it and see what it tastes like but there's a whole bunch of little baby ones now i haven't really been hand pollinating these um you can if you want to right you can take some of these little um, male flowers and yank them off and come in here and pollinate what you notice are the female flowers um, i haven't been doing that just because i don't have the time this season to do that um, and i am going to come through here with some neem oil because i'm starting to notice some 
powdery mildew, um, which has killed my cucumbers in the past. So I really want to avoid that. I'm going to snip these leaves off anything that has powdery mildew. Um, it's not that many of them. I've noticed some of the smaller or like the, the lower leaves. Um, and then this is like just my diatomaceous earth. Um, so not stuff like that, but things that have those little white spots on them. I want to prevent that and catch it really early. Um, I'm going to come through and spray neem oil on them um, and hopefully be able to control that and not have to deal with that this season again. Um, now below here, um, below my cucumbers and next to my tomatoes are my jade bush beans, I think, or like blue lake bush beans. I forgot which one they are because they look basically the same. Um, but you can see they have a whole bunch of little baby flowers on them. Um, so I am hoping that in the next couple of days here we'll actually start getting some little green beans. Um, they are like seriously flowering. Um, and then you can see they are starting to get that damage too. So I really want to nip this in the bud and prevent it early. Um, I have been coming out here and picking off these cutworms as quickly as possible. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll be able to stop that from spreading. So continuing on with our beans, we have yellow wax beans um, for the rest of these. And we have quite a few. I think it's like half and half with the yellow wax beans up to around there or so. And then we have a whole bunch of um, bush beans that are like green beans. Um, but I don't like the trellising ones because they generally like the, the trellising ones I found are really stringy. So these ones don't have any strings on them and they're really great. Um, I would definitely recommend the blue lake bush beans and the jade bush beans. Um, right behind here, you can see are like a thousand little tomato flowers. So these are actually um, indeterminate tomatoes. They are cherry tomatoes. And we have, making sure there's no bugs on here, and we do have quite a few of the um, little baby tomatoes coming out. Oh, here we go, I found a cluster here. So I don't think I've seen so much of that pest damage on these, maybe because they're higher up and not on the ground, and also because um, I have like some stuff planted underneath here, like I have some thyme, which I have on the other ones too. Um, but I think because this here is kind of blocking a lot of that and then it's further up maybe the cutworm damage isn't so bad on these um, i have found a few like this one here you can see this little cutworm which needs to come off before it gets onto my plants um but yeah these are not my favorite guys so i just come in here and i make sure that they're dead either by stepping on them or whatever the case is all right um and then yeah, I've been propping these up because as you can see, they're growing really fast and I continue to just tie them onto the trellis um, with these little green tomato ties. These are really great because they're Velcro, so you can reuse them. And when I'm when they're not in use, I just kind of like clip them on here or like Velcro them <laughs> to, the, to the trellis. Um, but they're doing really well, these tomatoes. And we found another little guy here. So the same thing, I'm going to go ahead and squash him. And these tomatoes are actually really prolific. So hopefully we'll get some of these soon and they'll continue to trellis up. Um, and because of course they are indeterminate tomatoes, as these ones trellis up, um, they will continue to grow more flowers and then the bottom leaves will, you know, just continue to produce and they'll, they'll really not stop until I either rip them out um, or something gets them like pests or whatever. But as long as they have the ideal growing conditions, these tomatoes will continue to produce and flower. I mean, each one of these hopefully will turn into a little baby tomato so i cannot wait to see what these ones taste like this is the first time i'm growing this variety and you can see the little yellow wax beans with their little purple flowers here um, next to it here we have about four square feet of arugula um, and so we've actually been harvesting a ton of arugula i did come through here and pick off a lot of what had um, leaf miner damage. And so by doing that, and I think I sprayed some neem oil also at some point in time. So when I noticed that um, I came through and I cut all of it out and I put some neem oil and it seems like it's doing really well, um, no real leaf miner damage, which I cannot say the same for my kale. <laughs> um, if this doesn't look like kale to you, that is because um, the cutworms have gotten to it. And so I came over here and I picked off about 20 cutworms the other day. Um, I was hoping that it would continue to grow, but I also came through and I reseeded some kale because I don't know if this is actually going to survive. Um, and I would like some kale this season. Next to it is my mustard. All right, so they're 
four square feet, four square feet, and four square feet for a total of six square feet of leafy greens. So this is all my salad greens. And then you can see the mustard is doing really well. Um, this has been a little bit slower this season to actually come up, um, maybe because of the heat and maybe also because it's in a little bit shadier spot this season, but it's still doing really well. Um, I'm really bummed about the kale though. <laughs> um, so hopefully the next round will be much better. And then my one little lone cucumber plants, which is actually doing really well, um, much better than I thought it was gonna be in the shade, right? We have this tree here, which shades out this area, which is great for the leafy greens. I had an extra one of these with some chalice space, so I just stuck it here. Um, but so far, no cucumbers. Lots of little buds though. You can see there's little miniature cucumbers hopefully growing. Um, so that will be good once they start producing. Um, and then my basil over here is definitely not doing too hot. This I think is getting, or did, get eaten alive by cutworms. All right, my parsley is back here. This is actually parsley I had from a previous, or from last season, um, and I saved it and I stuck it back in here with the roots and everything, is doing really well, as well as that parsley back here, um, and some of these little baby parsley which are coming up, um, new for this season, which I seeded in. This basil has been eaten alive though. Um, actually, that's lemon balm, which is also getting eaten alive, the same as that one. Um, this parsley, not doing so hot, which is why I actually went to the garden center the other day and I got some basil. So I have a couple of these plants. Um, there's actually a few in each of these containers, so I'm going to separate them out. And I'm going to put down maybe some coffee grounds to prevent the caterpillars or cutworms or whatever they are. Um, and then also use some neem oil and hopefully that will prevent them from eating that um, because I would actually like to harvest some basil and I have some oregano all right so hopefully the same thing um, and I have my little lemon balm here so also trying to find a way to protect that um, now you can see here though um, this is the base of my tree and this is parsley growing out of the floor and actually quite a bit of it all right I did not plant this here of course um, it must have just seeded itself or maybe some of the seeds i had like originally planted in here like blew over with the winds but yeah um our lawn is now growing parsley <laughs> so um the rest of my aroma tomatoes are on this side and these are actually getting a lot less cutworm damage um than my other tomatoes right you can see i have a whole bunch of little baby tomatoes in here now this is not nearly as prolific as the other ones so for a good portion of the day um, they get sun but the other portion of the day it is a little bit more shaded out on this side which i think is why they have not been doing too well um, but they are doing pretty well i mean definitely still worth keeping them around because they are growing lots of little flowers and they have lots of little green tomatoes on them um, so hopefully between this side roma tomatoes and that side over there, Roma tomatoes. I'll be able to harvest a whole bunch of Roma tomatoes for sauces and everything. Now, if you're thinking, why didn't I just plant all my Roma tomatoes in one spot? Um, it is because I know that this garden and all the other gardens I've ever had actually in this area get a lot of cutworms. And when one plant gets cutworms, it spreads to all of the other plants that get cutworms. So by breaking up the same type of crop, right? So all my tomatoes are not all in one place, I can prevent this batch of tomatoes from becoming as infested as the other ones you can see they both still have it and even my indeterminate tomatoes which are right there behind me they still have some however they don't have nearly as much as the ones right here um, and that is because they're a little bit separated so at least if that one becomes completely overrun by cutworms i'm able to save the other ones um, and so you never want to place anything that has the same type of um, pest in all in one little bunch because once it gets wiped out, you don't have any more of that type of vegetable. Hey puppy, you bored? Yeah. Come on. We're doing a garden tour. Wake up. Say hi. Mm. All right, so over here on my potting bench, I wanna show you guys what is going on. I still have a whole bunch of little baby parsley um, that well this one is wilting but the other ones are doing pretty well um, I do need to come through and water them I have some lemon balm which I didn't put out all of it in the garden I'm really thankful I didn't because yeah it's getting completely killed over there and I even have some mint this is mountain mint 
which I got from Baker Creek. Um, it smells really nice. I think the plant label is worn off already, um, but that smells really, really nice. Um, and I have a whole bunch of it. And then over here, I actually have my little papaya seedlings. Now, I completely forgot about this one. Um, I knew I had four, but I don't know. I just didn't dawn on me that I actually had them. And so I went ahead and potted them up. Um, let me find some shade. So I went ahead and potted up my papayas. And so I have a total of four. Now you can see this one is getting bigger um, because it has more space along with the other ones in here. Um, and so this one, I just need to come through and actually pot it up, give it a little bit more space. Um, and that way I can plant out all of my papaya on my food forest. Now here I have my chaya, which eventually will also go in my food forest. These were actually just cuttings um, from a nursery. Somebody had given them to me and look how well it's doing now. Um, tons of new green growth. And then this one even, which didn't root at first, this one is finally growing some roots too. So I'm really excited about that. And then I have my spearmint over here. Um, just basking in the sun, which smells really nice. We've been using this a lot for like mojitos um, and tea. Um, I really like the spearmint and I mean, I like the mountain mint also. It's more pepperminty, but for mojitos, it has to be spearmint, of course. And then you guys, my Moringa little baby trees. Um, I have them staked up here with these little tomato Velcro things, but they're just doing so well. Um, I absolutely love the way that they look. They just look like little confetti leaves. But yeah, I have two of them that are doing ridiculously well. And Milo over here wanting to play. So these will actually be going in the food forest once they're a little bit bigger. We do have a deer problem right now in the food forest. So these guys will live here for the meantime in these pots and I'll continue to pot them up. And these are two gallon pots so they can live here right now as they continue to grow and get stronger um, before going into the food forest. So as you can see, the garden has been going crazy this past month. I'm really excited to be able to harvest stuff finally and we actually have tons of tomatoes growing. So hopefully at the end of the season, we will have pounds and pounds and pounds of tomatoes to harvest if we can get this cutworm infestation under control. I am going to go ahead and do my BT treatments and some neem oil treatments um, now that it has cooled off a little bit. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.